Hey everybody, welcome back to the Latch Trauma Podcast. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, this podcast is for all the parents, the mothers, especially who are in the trenches of motherhood. I am joined today by Lindy, who is also a fellow mom of six. Um, and we are going to talk today about burnout. You're listening to Latch Mama Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa Wirt, busy mom of six and owner of latchmama.com. Join us each week as we talk about pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, and all things motherhood. Hi, friends. Hi. It's good to podcast about this topic on a Monday because I feel like if there's ever a day Mm. that I am reminded of what it feels like to have so many children and to be needed so much, it is Mondays. Mondays. Monday morning. There's a certain aspect Mm -hmm. of when the kids get off to their activities and or... The nanny shows up in the mm-hmm. morning that I am like, holy moly, I can take a deep breath finally. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So I don't know where we want to start. We were talking a little bit about making sure that this is um, relatable to all moms, depending on whether you're pregnant or right. have one kid or six kids. Um, but I've definitely learned a lot as my family has increased in size and I have grown in my Mm -hmm. confidence in terms of motherhood and all of that stuff. Um, I think my like number one, like comment on burnout is like you absolutely 100% cannot do it all. Like, and you just have to choose. You have to literally in Mm -hmm. every moment of the day, choose what you're going to maybe potentially be successful at and what you have to let go. Right. hundred yeah, percent. But uh, I, yeah, I just think it's hard though sometimes because you have, you, ha- I can say that, but I feel like until you're actually in that moment as a mom mm-hmm. and you start to let things go, mm-hmm. you don't really, you, you think it's all going to break or you think you're going to be the worst mom in the world. Or mm-hmm. if you don't get like them dressed perfectly or dinner's not, you know, exactly right. Or they didn't eat a vegetable today or whatever mm-hmm. that everything's going to implode, but it's not what happens. I can tell you. No, no. And I was trying to think back, like when I had no kids and then you had a one kid mm-hmm. and I don't know. I just kept thinking like, you just don't have those other kind of responsibilities when that, you know, that other person like really needs you like literally like depends on you like yeah uh-huh. <laughs> to get fed and whatnot i'm not talking about like a husband or a partner or anything like yeah. that or a friend or you yeah. know, you're all adults then, but um just what gets slowly added to your plate yeah. and when I was like a brand new mom you do like I still had that like I can yeah. do this and I'm gonna do this, this and I'm gonna and do yep. this well and I'm gonna do this 100% and this 100% and this 100% and it just slowly teaches you that like you can't do it you can't do it and so I was trying to think like where my mom burnout if you will was like the worst mm-hmm. and it probably was in that well, it continued, but in a different way. But that just that true mom burnout when I would literally take on everything and I really wanted to do it 100%. Yeah. Until I kind of learned that, you know, yeah. you can't. So Nathan was by far, Nathan was my first, but he was by far and has always been and will always be probably like my greatest teacher in life. Like he mm-hmm. is the one that, you know, he was born in the back of the car. So those lessons were immediate in terms of what he mm-hmm. taught me. But then he was not a typical baby. He cried literally like 20 hours a day maybe he had colic he had reflux he was super super hard and all of those like beautiful thoughts I had of what our first year or so was going to look like and what kind of mother I was going to be and you know how long he was going to breastfeed for and how I was going to have dinner ready every night when Eric came home from work and the house Mm -hmm. was going to be clean and oh my gosh I didn't have to work anymore and I just got to love on this little boy and we were going to go to the park and we were going to do all of these things and he was going to read like the white and black books you know as he was growing up because that's the (laughs) ones that you know could teach him how his brain worked and then we would move on to these other ones and then we would go to story time Mm -hmm. yeah we couldn't do any of that because he was just a screamy mess that was only happy on the breast only so literally I was nap trapped I don't know crazy like all day long which of course made me touched out which of course made me feel like less of a good wife which of course I mean it just broke down every single element of what I thought I was supposed to be 
as a mom and what motherhood was going to look like. Yeah. So when I think back kind of on like when I was the most burnt out, I was the most burnt out during with one, that mm -hmm. first year of his life. Like I have more confidence and the ability I feel like to make decisions of what I need now um, with six mm -hmm. than I did um, with one. Some of that's maturity, but some of that was that it was just that hard. Yeah. Um, and that kind of like world <laughs> rocking so I feel like you probably see the burnout a lot more kind of in those very early stages of motherhood when we're like shocked into the idea of, oh, my gosh, this is not what I expected it to be. Um, and then slowly as you add more children to the mix as well. Yeah. Um, but I just I think we do a very, very poor job in the United States, of course, of supporting our moms in the postpartum, but also setting the expectation that it's not going to be necessarily always rainbows and sunshine there are rainbows there are sunshine there are amazing adorable mm -hmm. great moments but I think I've learned that if I can slow down and take in those moments they fill my cup for the later moments where I'm mm -hmm. like completely burnt out like Catherine who like doesn't wear dresses at all like she's happy in her Paw Patrol t-shirt and mm -hmm. her running shorts all the time she just turned three like that's just Catherine she wanted to be Anna for Halloween um so she got this beautiful Anna dress from Amazon and she put it on and Saturday afternoon Eric had taken the big three out and I had the little three and I was just kind of overwhelmed it was like why does he get the big three who were easier but I also know that they also come with their own challenges, but I'm home with the younger three and I wanted to make dinner and I was, just, I was just grumpy, you know, like in that mm -hmm. kind of like, gosh, I just want to sit, but everybody like mm -hmm. they were just, they were like the, they were like in a needy mood, like mama, 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 mom, mom, mom. And it was just like constant. And I literally just wanted to take a deep breath. But then I looked over and this sweet little just turned three year old is sitting in her on a dress, watching frozen, eating this little pumpkin muffin and like <laughs> literally in like two seconds, mm -hmm. I went from, woe is me. This is so hard. I just mm -hmm. literally want to take a deep breath and just stop talking to everybody, please, to, oh my gosh, like this is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I think that like somehow like kind of makes like they say we're crazy sometimes. I mean, how can you not be mm -hmm. when, like when you have these like whiplash moments between things feeling so hard and so overwhelming and then being so incredibly taken back by love constantly, yeah. you know? Yeah. I remember when you were just talking about that and feeling overwhelmed and I think mine and my greatest teacher will always be Gabe. They've all taught me stuff, but, um, Gabe, sir, I think mm -hmm. makes, it just reminds me of what you said yeah. about Nathan and whatnot. And, um, I remember when we really started having some, some challenges and trying to figure out what, you know, what was going on and, you know, who he was and what he struggles with. I was already like two months pregnant with Nora. <clears throat> and I think those were some really, really tough months because I didn't really enjoy that beginning of that pregnancy because I was so overwhelmed and drained and just that already mom burnout out with an 18 month old yeah. or really he was probably like 14, 16 months. Um, he still wasn't walking yet. Um, struggled to communicate and I've just, I, I was completely in over my head, had no idea. I mean, I had Lennox, but being that pregnant and struggling and not knowing how to help my child, like I just felt incredibly burnt out. Um, so kind of that same, like just a lot of like incredibly difficult days. Um, really hard to see the good parts. Uh, and I just, I do, I was just kind of reminiscing on kind yeah. of that feeling of really feeling like I had no way out, no way out. And I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And mm -hmm. like that kind of started that journey. Um, but then before you know it, he walked literally the, like the day she was the day before she was born Aww. and he just took off. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like he was saving that. Yeah. <laughs> and now, like, he's at home in the water. And I'm like, it's probably why you didn't want to walk on land. You just want to <laughs> swim in the water all the time. <laughs> um, you know, and I do. I can look back and see those really great moments. But, gosh, there's just some really, really hard mom, like, burnout ones. It's just, just, I think it's really hard because at the very beginning stages, until you get to the point where you see at least one get easier, you think it's always going to be mm -hmm. super super hard mm -hmm. and like it's just funny because when people tell me like 
this is just a stage. This is just a time. And I think people are careful to say it. But when the people who like really matter to you say that, you do you do have to realize it. You do start to realize that like it doesn't ever get easy for for sure. But like for those of you who have like two or three or even one in those super super early weeks and months, it does get easier. Like it 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 hundred percent does. They they get less needy. They they can do things on their own. And I think that part of it is realizing that they're probably not going to do things on their own unless you challenge them to do things on their own. And I think this is something Lindy and I talk about a lot. A lot of this is just natural big parenting. It just has to happen when you have a big family parenting, when you have a big family. But like some of the things that I know that I felt burnt out with in the past, and we've talked about this on the podcast, like dinner time. It's a really important time in our house and our family. Um, we really try to sit at the dinner table at least six nights a week. And we talk about the kids go through a routine. They talk about their favorite thing about their day, their biggest challenge, what they learned. Da, 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 da. Um, but I have learned that there are times where I have to feed myself. Like there are times where I literally have to mm-hmm. sit down and say, I'm sorry. I've just sat down. I've made my food. You need to go get your own water or like, mm-hmm. li- like literally just set some boundaries with my kids, which mm-hmm. is really kind of silly to say, but like I, I like taco night. I will, I, if I didn't go sit down and eat, mm-hmm. I would be making tacos until nine o'clock at night because right. every time I turned around, somebody else would be done and then they'd be back mm-hmm. up and then they would be done. And like, I don't know. I know that so sounds so silly, but like mm-hmm. sometimes you literally have to just choose you yeah, and choose you in a time where hopefully the kids aren't going to get hurt. And hopefully, yeah. you know, they're going to make good decisions and you can still see them in eyesight and stuff like that. But sometimes you have to like literally, you know, yeah. choose what you need to do. And I think it's hard in ways where I wish I could take, you know, where I'm now, where I can see, hey, this is really needed mm-hmm. and I'm important. And I wish I could, you know, you wish you could combine that with that, you know, mom or myself struggling years mm-hmm. ago with three kids. Cause I think that was the hardest. Gabe didn't sleep through the night till six, he was six or seven years mm-hmm. old. He had like night terrors and dreams and just going through that. Yeah. But I also had two other infants that well, you know, Nora and then Nellie came along. So I had three Pete like up at mm-hmm. night and I was just completely exhausted. And I wish I could take this knowledge now knowing how important I am and how I need to take care of myself and, you know, give it to, yeah. give it to myself year, years ago, which you can't. You yeah. can't. Um, but if this could help any mom that is in those trenches mm-hmm. say, you know what? I am important. I can make a change or I can take care of myself. That would be yeah. amazing. I also learned that like that little hack about if your kid's upset, take them outside or put them in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. It works for us too. Yeah. And that's like my With number. big like, ones. Yeah. But, it, but it, it works as adults. Go tell your partner that you need to go take a bath and go shut the door. Bath, or shower. Or just go put them in front of screens and go walk laps around the outside Mm -hmm. of your house. It's really funny. My dad's one of seven and one family holiday. I remember growing up all of his siblings, you know, we were all together on the cousins chaos. And somebody said something like, you remember when mom used to, I think their mom, my grandmother had passed away at this point. She used to rain or shine when she couldn't handle it anymore. She would just go outside and she would just walk laps around the outside of the house. That's also when they knew that she was just about done and that they needed to actually like behave. Mm. Um, But she would just go outside and walk laps around the house because there's something about nature. There's something about a change of pace. It works with babies and it works with kids and it also you know, mm-hmm. works with us. Um, yeah. So that's one of my, my little quote unquote burnout tips. The other thing is like your kids will get old enough where if you have those conversations with them, hopefully, and you have kind of started early enough with them, they will hopefully understand. So like I had a couple this weekend. Um, one of mine wanted to have, wanted to go over to a friend's house and I found a lot of joy lately, just like putting on the music and cooking in the kitchen. And like, I can kind of see everybody and I can kind of manage it all, but like, it's just brought me joy just cooking like good food for my family, which is kind of weird. I think it's just cause it's turning fall and I love soup and stuff. But anyways, um, I knew that that was what was going to bring me joy. 
And I was going to try and figure out a way for all of us to have joy, to, mm-hmm. for him to have a friend over and for me to still, you know, putz around in the kitchen and, you know, make some food and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And so we found a middle ground. But what it took was me slowing down and saying, hey, like not only like internally, like my needs are important, but talking to my kids and explaining to them, like, this is what I want to do. This is what you want to do. Can we come up with a compromise? Yeah. I no, know. I think it was great. But it's just when you went to go pick him up, I think yeah, it's great no, it's great. And then later, Alex has really been enjoying watching Mr. Beast with me. From like, so the littles go to bed at eight, and then the the boys go to bed, which is Benjamin's hanging on to that, and he should not be going to bed at nine. But they go to bed at nine because Benjamin's now in the big boy room um, with them, which I don't really know if that's the right parenting decision. But Alex has enjoyed watching Mr. Beast with me. Um, in bed from eight to nine. And it's been really hard for me because I'm normally asleep by nine. So that's like my one hour, like my one hour that I have to read or to watch something or to sometimes work or to do anything. And literally looking at this little eight year old who I know is not going to want to cuddle with me in bed for the rest of his life and just kind of say, Hey, you know what? Tonight mom really needs to read or like, Hey buddy, like I'm feeling a little off. Like I really need some time you know, journaling or doing something, you know, Mm -hmm. but like having those honest conversations with your kids and Mm -hmm. teaching them that, that you have needs and that you're important too, and that it's okay to advocate for yourself. It doesn't always work because Alex will look at me and be like, I don't want to go out and get exercise. My body's telling me that I want to play Pokemon (laughs) right now. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. I still know what's best for you, you know, but it's, I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. And just that whole kind of compromise made me think of like, when my kids were younger, we had this American family membership Mm -hmm. and, um, which is a gym, which is a gym. Um, and so I would go and I do it that like, like I would lift some weights and stuff like that. And I enjoyed it. But like, as we got older, like there were times that we would go and I sat and read a book at the table in the lobby And so that was like American family, but there's also like the Y, like if you have a YMCA near you and for like 75 bucks a month, if you can do it for a family, you could take two hours for yourself. If you're in that complete mom burnout, Mm -hmm. go swim, go sit, go read. I don't know. Go walk on a treadmill. Like I don't care what you do, but it's a pretty inexpensive way. If you're looking for your kids to go do a craft, Mm -hmm. just go have fun, be safe, but you can really just take a breath and do whatever whatever it is you need to do, but it's kind of like compromise. So we would talk about that back in some of those years. I said, well, let's go and do this. And then on the way home, you guys want to go to the park. We can hang out at the park for like an hour and then we can go do lunch Mm -hmm. or something like that. So it, it, it was, it was a compromise. It was like, I kind of need this because I've been up since four 30 with a nursing infant and it's now nine o'clock and we're going to go do this for about an hour and a half and then we'll go do the park and then we'll go home Mm -hmm. and do lunch and like nap time. And it was a nice compromise. Yeah. Um, I think too, um, I think that that's a really good option in terms of asking for help, but Mm -hmm. like help does not make you less of a mother. Like I know I started with like literally in half an hour, maybe, maybe an hour a day from like a local, Mm -hmm. like 16 year old would come over and, Claire, who actually ended up working here and being our first Latch Mama employee. Um, But she used to hang out with the boys um, and I would just go do something. And I remember the first time I like went to Target while somebody else was watching my kids. It felt like the most like selfish, self-indulging thing that I've Mm -hmm. ever done. And it's really funny. Now I'm singing from the hills when the nannies show up on Monday morning. But it's funny how things have changed. But I've also like really, truly learned, and this may be just me accepting the fact that I need help with my kids now because of everything that's on my plate. But those people that you introduce into your life to help you, if they're the right people, whether Mm -hmm. it be like a speech pathologist or whether it be a nanny or whether it be just anybody like they become a part of your life and your story and your kid's life. And Mm -hmm. they bring perspective and they bring differences like Nathan's reading tutor that he goes to. Like I, I don't have a whole lot of contact with her. I wish life would slow down so I could like send her a thank you card, which I need to absolutely no excuse that life is moving too fast that I haven't done that. But she is like so gentle and she brings, and then there's like Miss Marie who teaches, 
speech teacher for two of my kids, speech therapist, mm-hmm. and then she does like a social group with Gabe. Yeah. She does. She'll do like pairing. Yeah. And it's kind of speech and like some OT. It's just, and it's just stuff. really yeah. cool. It's like those people become mm-hmm. part of your life. And if you yeah. find the right ones and you ask for help in the right way, and it really does come from a place of, Hey, I, I just, I just need time. Like there, you don't need a reason. Like if you have the money mm-hmm. to do it, you don't really need the reason other than the right person is going to understand why you need it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, but the stuff that my kids have learned from the people who love them and show up for them Mm -hmm. is stuff that I could never teach them from my own life experience, which I think is really rad. Yeah. You know, I mean, you always have to be careful and make sure that the right people and stuff, but I think that there's that element to it that I find really cool and rewarding. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. I was trying to think one thing it's on topic, but it was a little different, but as far as like burnout, I wish I knew. And it's just, I guess it's just, in hindsight you can't do anything about it but like how to communicate to my partner yeah like i had no idea and there have been times where he's like i really had no idea and i mean there was work on his side there was work on my side but it's like what could have been you Mm -hmm. know if i had even if i've been like i don't know what's going on but there's a lot and i'm drowning and like like something you know to get the conversation started to figure out what Mm -hmm. what could have been done because yeah. we struggled in that area. Yeah. I was so in over my head. and it goes to your post-it notes. Lindy still wants to make post-it notes for you all. Um, <laughs> that that's like, It comes up almost every week like in the midst of like, hey, let's make a jacket like, or let's do this. Here. And Lindy's like, I'm like why, are, why have we not made my post-it notes yet? We will make them. I want them. cards on the mirror. Yeah, she wants post-it notes or cards that you can stick on the and bathroom mirror when you don't even have to You can just flip through these 20 cards and, oh, I'm feeling that today. Here, I'm going to put that up for my partner. Yeah, I but then you have know. to hope that they show up on the other side, which hopefully which, they will. But yeah, I, know. I don't know. Anyways. But I think that like the whole like coming from two people who I think at some point in their motherhood journey, and I'm going to speak for Lindy right now, didn't really have a whole lot of self-worth mm-hmm. and really kind of lost ourselves in that journey. Um, I think there's been a lot of work on both of our sides. I think Latch Mama has helped a lot being able to show up for you all has helped a lot too. Um, But like you guys are important. If there needs to be a screen for a few hours and you need Mm -hmm. to hide underneath a blanket with chocolate and a book, you absolutely have every single right to do that. hundred percent. Yeah. But I also think that we need to be careful with labeling self care as like a requirement of life. And like, that's where I struggle a little bit is like when somebody asks me like, How are you taking care of yourself? To me, the way that question comes across is, oh, crap, I'm not taking care of myself. Therefore, I am not showing up for my kids the way I should be. And I should be making showing up for myself a priority. And what do I need to fit into my Mm -hmm. schedule to make sure that I'm doing that? And it brings me down this whole like crazy road where I can probably tell you if I were to sit back and say, hey, what did you choose to do this weekend that was for you? Mm -hmm. You know, not your kids. I can tell you, like, I chose to let them eat anywhere they wanted to last night for dinner. And I sat out on the back porch and watched the rain fall and ate my soup. And it was amazing. Was Mm -hmm. it 10 minutes long? Yeah. But I'm not going to like, if you say, what have you done for self care? I'm going to be like, I'm not going to go get a massage or something right now. Like, that's not like the chance. That's not the stage of life that I'm in, you know? Well, and if you wanted to, you could. Absolutely. Fine. 100%. I also get not a little bit heated, but it like gets me a little like, "Mm." and Mm -hmm. I saw it on Slack Mm -hmm. recently too. The whole like, just go take a shower. I'm like, that's basic needs. Like you Mm -hmm. eating your soup by yourself. Yeah. That is just a basic need like to function. Same with a shower. It's not like self care. It is just a basic human need to be able to go and get clean. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but I also know that sometimes it's hard to even ask for those. Like, yes. like I have never, yes. I, like I went through a stage where like I got 15 minutes after dinner before bedtime mm-hmm. that was like penciled in as like my time in the bathtub. Like mm-hmm. do not come in here. Do not. But I would say probably 60% of the time it was successful. A kid would get loose yeah. or a kid would, you know, find their way. But I also think that like we have to celebrate the little wins of when we yes. put ourselves first because I think it is so easy to forget and it is so right. easy to land in that like, you know, this is the time of my life to give myself to others crap that like you absolutely in every single mm-hmm. little moment that you find for yourself, that is hard work and 
Yeah. It's really important to put yourself first, but yeah. it may not look the same as somebody who you see on social media who does girls night every week, or it may not look the same as somebody who is away at a winery, you know, with I their friends. Like I have not done that at all with my six kids, like ever in this business. I have the means to do it, but that's just not what I know that that's not necessarily where I would be happy. I'm happy. Like, carving out 10 minutes to eat my soup or Mm -hmm. telling sweet little Alex that I can't watch Mr. Beast with him tonight because I want to read my book, you know? There was a lady that I, I didn't know her, but I heard and her one thing, and she ran around with all kinds of kids and activities. Mm -hmm. Her one thing is one night a week, one night a month, she would go to a hotel. I love it. Just one night a month. Like that was her thing Mm -hmm. um, that she did that take care of herself, the quiet. She got to watch what she wanted and I was just at, at first I was like, really? And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that kind of sounds like kind of nice. Like yeah. knowing who I am now, like with like six kids and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I, c- I could get on board yeah. with, with that. That sounds kind of cool. Um, but it's, but anyways, it's, it's funny, just, like when it doesn't work too, like because it doesn't always work, like all, you know, like slip in a couple of things that I know that I want to eat onto like mm-hmm. the food list, like the Walmart list or something. Mm-hmm. And then they'll come and I'll see them and I'll put them away. And then I'll like go late night and try and get them and they won't be there. Mm-hmm. And I will be so angry. Like it, it will, it, yeah. it will set me off. Cause I'll be like, I did that for myself. I found the time in my day to think about what I might want tonight once everybody goes to bed and Mm -hmm. my halo top ice cream is not there because somebody else ate it. Mm -hmm. That is the stuff sometimes that like literally irks me. Like that is what makes me so mad. Cause I'm like, I pour my life into these people and I can't even have a pint of ice cream. Like it's just, it's, and that's where it also also makes me think about, you know, when KK was sick and it Mm -hmm. took a long time and eventually you're like, I can't mentally do this anymore. Uh So like if I have something planned or back when when I was only here like one or two days a week Uh and something would come up well and guess who majority of the time takes care of the kids now our relationship is in a much better spot and we have better conversations about hey how can we do this together but anyways it would fall to me and I just at that point I could not mentally process it Mm -hmm. I it was literally like I would almost be you know, have this like panic attack because this was my time to be able to get out yep. of this place mm-hmm. and I can't and now I'm trapped and you know, it just brought back so many of those feelings and memories from just those really tough mothering days. Um and it throws me off. So mm-hmm. kinda like with your ice cream, yeah. it can be as simple as that. Or like my the day that storm. I was supposed to have I was supposed to get a haircut mm-hmm. today, which I've canceled five haircut appointments in the last two years. Like it's just you know Are you getting a haircut today? No. Why not? No, not today. I didn't cancel oh. it today. Oh, okay. I'm just saying right. it's okay. like these things that you yeah. do, the little things that help you feel yeah. like you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. And they're really important, but sometimes yeah. other things do trump them. And it really, really sucks. Yeah. And it makes you mad. It makes you frustrated because Absolutely. they're so simple. And it's like you're really looking forward to it. And it's not there anymore. Yeah. And then you just have to. And like, I've gotten better, you know. Yeah. No, it's, but it's, it's okay. True. We're going to be okay. It's like every once but, in a while, like it'll snow or something. And Lindy and I will text each other. And she'll be like, do you have help today? And I'll be like. I don't have help today. They can't make it here. And she's like, well, school's canceled. I'm home too. And it's like that friendship time and that time, like literally where we get to be creative together that feeds our souls is gone because, yeah. you know, life happens, which is fine. I mean, it it, it is what it is. It's just, yeah, yeah. it's like, so and I, I do better. Maybe, so maybe that's not, maybe that's why I don't like plan weekends away or you know do anything extreme when it comes to self-care maybe that's why I like carve out 10 minutes on the back porch to eat my soup in peace which actually 100% was not that because it's so funny because you add that little like change in routine Mm -hmm. and I had a kid on my lap wanting me to read her her Chick-fil-a book that came in her thing which Honestly, can we add some more pages to those? Can we make them a little bit better? Because I must have read it like seven times while I was eating my soup. And it literally was like, I live on a farm. I feed my chickens and my cows. We make food for the food pantry. I love spending time with my dad. And that's like all the book is. Again, mommy, again. Okay. All right. Okay. And then, you know, Matthew's screaming because he can't see me because he's in his high chair. So, I mean, it really wasn't that great. But. And on that know. note, I love the books, but don't yeah. give me the puzzle that has 30 different little no. strips of paper. Not no. going to do that again. Mm-hmm. No. All those little but piece yeah, things. I get it. I don't know. It's fine. It, it is what it is. It's just, 
I feel like the mom burnout's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think the cliff notes are find time to put yourself first. It does not have to be these amazing, planned, mm-hmm. crazy things. And literally do what you need to do. Make sure the kids are safe. Like if you have a brand new baby, it's okay to put it in its crib safely and walk away or go brush your teeth, which I know is a basic necessity, but sometimes that is what taking time out looks like or go sit on the floor and cry or call Mm -hmm. a friend or, and I will tell you the bath is a really good one as they get older Mm because they'll knock. And I'm like, if you come in, you're seeing all, you're seeing all of it. I'm in the bath and they're like, Oh, go. I'm like, yeah, leave me alone. Go away. I'd like my kids (laughs) to get to that age because they will find me the second, my second, my butt hits the toilet seat (laughs) for any reason. It's like an an entire alarm goes off the entire house. Like there has to be a mom, butt alarm. There has to be like, literally they could be in the basement watching a movie and I hadn't Mm -hmm. seen them in an hour. Mm -hmm. The second my butt hits the seat, even the old ones. I'm like, what are you doing? Why can this not wait? Oh, Nellie does that. She's like, mama. And I'm like, Nellie, I'm, I'm on the toilet. She's like, oh, I just didn't know where you were. Okay, bye. And I'm like, you didn't even need anything. You didn't even need anything. You just needed Nothing. to know where I yeah. was. <laughs> so it's real. It happens. Ask for help. Find help. Get a little break. If you get little breaks, the burnout, I feel like in some cases, you have a little bit more stamina before it happens again, especially if you have something to look forward to. But do you put yourself first, figure out ways to make sure like lower the standards mm-hmm. everywhere else, make sure they're safe and then choose you figure out what's going to make about you it. happy. Yeah. Try yeah. to find a way to talk about it Yeah, to your partner or somebody. Yeah. Ask for help. That's like my number one yeah. mom thing. All right. Cool. Bye guys. See you next week.